Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to the informational webinar for the Department of Energy Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations program focused on energy improvements in rural or remote areas, or ERA. Today's webinar is focused on the applicant information related to the concept papers. My name is Katrina Pielli, and I'm the Director of the Engagement Office in OSED, and I'll be kicking us off today. As I mentioned, this webinar focuses specifically on the concept paper, Encourage or Discourage Decisions, that were issued on Friday, June 2nd. Before we dive in, a couple of housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being recorded, and we will post it on the DOE OSED website, and all participants are in listen-only mode. To turn on live captions, you can click on the closed captions button indicated on your control panel. Second, please note that we're not taking questions. And so today, what we'd like you to do is to submit any questions that you might have to the ERA Funding Opportunity Announcement or FOA email. That email is E-R-A-F-O-A and the number one. So ERAFOA1 at hq.doe.gov. And finally, a copy of today's presentation will be posted to the OSED ERA webpage, and the link will be posted on the OSED Exchange under this FOA's post. Uh, the recording will be available as well, but that'll take about two weeks. Next slide, please. One more final disclaimer from our lawyers before we dive in. The purpose of this webinar is to share common issues that we observed in the concept papers that were submitted to the OSED ERA FOA number 2970, as well as highlight other funding and technical assistance opportunities that may be of interest to you. We will be sharing only publicly available information today, and note that the webinar is for informational purposes only. I would like to flag that the department is not seeking comments or information on the FOA, but that the applications are due on August 2nd. So there was a FOA amendment to increase the time to allow folks to apply. Finally, attending the webinar and watching the recording is completely voluntary and will not impact an application. The webinar is not a rule or regulation, and if there are any inconsistencies between the FOA and the statements in the webinar, the FOA is the controlling document and appropriate reference. David, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. I'm sorry, I I think my, my sound uh, went out, but thank you, Katrina, for the introduction and thank you everyone who's participating on this call today for your interest in this uh, energy improvements in rural or remote areas, or the ERA program, as we call it. And I want to particularly thank uh, all those on the phone who took the time to submit concept papers for the first funding opportunity for this program. We received 365 concept papers, and as I think most people on the phone know, from nine different regions, and we've received concept papers from all those regions and from every, uh, so every region of the U.S. and from the U.S. territories. The number and diversity of locations, the number and diversity of proposals exceeded our team's expectations and shows the incredible amount of interest and excitement for this program and for our mission. And we share that excitement here at the DOE at OSED, and, and we hope that we can work with you to directly improve people's lives. And as I like to say here, it gives us an opportunity to lead with the heart. Um, the concept papers represent the best solutions for improving clean energy reliability and affordability in some of the most energy vulnerable areas of the country, uh, areas that experience frequent power outages, expensive energy costs, and few other options to improve their situations without substantial funding. So I want to emphasize that we're looking for clean energy solutions here, but also for affordability, resilience, and fairness in terms of the structure of the proposals. We have $300 million available for this sp specific funding opportunity. And so competition was fierce amongst the 365 concept papers. We ultimately encouraged 78 of the concept papers, uh, encouraged uh, the applicants to submit full applications on August 2nd. And that's based on the proposed project's ability to demonstrate the ERA's program's objectives for resiliency and scalability and replicability. 
We expect to award between four and 28 projects with a, a federal uh, funding amount somewhere between one and a hundred million dollars. So, uh, so encouraging 78 out of 365 should not be seen as a reflection on the quality of the uh, close to 300 uh, concept papers that we did not uh, encourage. Uh, we were we were more prescriptive than I think normal because of the fact that we recognize there's a certain burden in uh, putting together the full application, and we only wanted uh, folks to do that who had a, a, a meaningful chance of success. So um, we understand in particular that communities with fewer than 10,000 people uh, and smaller communities within that subset don't always have access to the capital required for these major clean energy upgrades, which is why as a sister program to the one we're talking about today, OSED released a grant funding opportunity in May. The grant opportunity has no cost share requirement from non-federal sources and is specifically geared towards smaller projects ranging in size from a half a million dollars to $5 million each. So to those groups who are not encouraged uh, to submit a full application for this funding opportunity announcement, we encourage you to explore this, late, the, this latest grant funding announcement from the ERA program. And there will be a, a broader description of that program later in this pre presentation. Uh, just to conclude, our hope is with this funding opportunity, the, the ERA program at large is to solve some of the unique energy issues found in rural and remote communities by demonstrating community-driven clean energy projects to help improve the resilience uh, of our country's rural and remote energy systems. So I uh, will start with an overview of the program. Regina Gaylor, the program manager for the Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas program. We in this era, as we like to call it, program are charged to improve the resilience, reliability, affordability of energy systems in communities across the United States, communities with 10,000 or fewer people. The ERA program received $1 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure law and provides financial investment, technical assistance, and other resources to advance clean energy demonstrations and energy solutions, we like to say, that are replicable and scalable. I'll run through three major goals of our program. We aim to fund community-driven energy projects that first, deliver measurable benefits to energy customers in rural or remote areas by funding replicable projects that lower energy costs, improve access and resilience, and reduce environmental harm. Two, we aim to demonstrate new rural or remote energy system models using climate resilient technologies, business structures that promote economic resilience, new financing mechanisms, and or new community engagement best practices. And third, we build clean energy knowledge, capacity, and self-reliance throughout rural America. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the concept paper as we set it up in our FOA. The concept papers were reviewed on the basis of the overall FOA responsiveness and viability of each proposed project. This criterion, our one concept paper criterion, involves consideration of six factors, and I'll summarize them here. Significant energy cost, resilience, or reliability challenges that are facing the identified rural or remote areas. The second of six is the scope, including key technologies, total cost, and how the proposed project will improve or overcome one or more of the energy challenges. The third of six factors under this criterion are how the project can mitigate environmental impacts of existing generation. The fourth factor, is the development plan and timeline, including finance, any key risks, 
challenges and possible mitigation strategies for those challenges and the impact of the Department of Energy funding. The fifth factor is the applicant and team have the qualifications, experience, capabilities, and other resources necessary to implement the project. And the last factor under this concept paper criterion involved strategies to ensure meaningful community and labor engagement, quality jobs and workforce development, environmental justice, and the Justice 40 initiative. Next slide, please. So we'll give you an overview of the concept paper results. As David said, we received 365 responsive concept papers under this funding opportunity announcement. They came from every region of the United States and US territories. We encouraged 78 of those 365 papers to submit applications and 287 of those concept papers were discouraged. I would like to pass uh, the floor over to Jeremy Mikrut, who's a demonstrations project manager for OSED on my team. And he will discuss a little bit more about the concept paper comments that we sent back. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, thank you, Regina. Uh, our, our main purpose today is to share the most common issues we encountered in the concept papers for this FOA. The, these issues were grounds for discouraged responses that were issued on June 2nd. We appreciate all the applicants' time and interest in our program and hope to highlight these issues, which may help you improve their, your project concepts to pursue, pursue future opportunities with us. Next slide, please. One of the common issues included projects that do not have a specific or rural or remote area identified or do not clearly identify the benefits to the identified rural or remote areas. Per the funding opportunity announcement, applicants shall clearly identify all the rural or remote areas their proposal will directly benefit. Applications must identify at least one area in the United States, including US territories, with a population of not more than 10,000 using the 2020 Census Bureau figures that will benefit from the proposal as noted uh, in the FOA section 4.0. The 2020 Census Bureau data is available at data.census.gov. For information on how to use this website, please refer to the FOA's guidance document section 2.4. Applicants must clearly describe and identify the direct benefits to all rural or remote areas their proposal will benefit. Next slide, please. Another issue, common issue that was uh, observed is that con concept papers did not indicate cost or propose costs with total costs under 5 million federal cost share for top area one or 10 million federal cost share for top area two. Applicants should carefully review the specified funding levels for each top area and submissions should meet the federal cost share amounts described in section 2.2 in the FOA. For topic area one, which are community scale demonstrations, proposals to implement clean energy projects with a federal cost share of at least 5 million and at most 10 million using one or more clean energy technologies that advance resilience and provide other benefits to one or more rural or remote communities. For top area two, which are large scale demonstrations, proposals to implement clean energy projects with a federal cost share of at least 10 million and at most 100 million. Large-scale demonstrations should benefit multiple communities, either through a single installation that benefits multiple rural or remote communities, or through a series of installations with similar or complementary characteristics across multiple communities. App applications that have funding below requests, fu funding requests below the top area amounts specified in section 2.2 of this FOA are encouraged to review an additional opportunity under the Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas program for clean energy demonstration projects requiring less than $5 million in federal cost share, uh, which would be DE-FOA-0003045. Regina will introduce this opportunity that opened on May 11th in a few minutes. The due date for pre-applications for this $15 million grant program are July 13th, so mark that down if your FOA concept paper was requesting 500,000 to 5 million and was discouraged. Next slide, please. 
another observation, uh, a common issue are concept papers that do not meet cost share requirements. Cost sharing is required under this FOA. A minimum of 50% non-federal cost share is required for projects in this FOA, unless the entity applying is eligible for the special cost share for domestic institutions of higher education, domestic nonprofit entities, and US state, local, or tribal government entities. See section 4.2 in the FOA for more information regarding this uh, cost share waiver. 20% uh, cost share uh, may be allowed in cases where the prime recipient is a domestic institution of higher education, domestic nonprofit entity, or US state, local, or tribal government entity, including Alaska Native corporations and Alaska Native village corporations. 50% cost share for all other, it's 50% cost share for all other projects. Applicants who believe their project qualifies for the reduced recipient cost share must be able to provide verification that the above requirements are satisfied. Next slide, please. A common issue that we discovered during the concept paper review was that concept papers that have technologies such as uh, HVAC upgrades or projects such as modeling uh, do not specifically address FOA objectives. Projects funded in either top area must satisfy at least one of the objectives listed uh, below, uh, which these include resilient clean energy objectives uh, to include improving overall cost effectiveness of energy generation, transmission or distribution systems, siting or upgrading transmission and distribution lines, reducing greenhouse gas emissions from energy generation in rural or remote areas, providing or modernizing electric generation facilities, developing microgrids, and increasing energy efficiency. DOE encourages projects that position rural or remote communities with energy solutions that are resilient to anticipated regional climate changes, cl regional climate changes, see section 2.2.3 in the FOA. Uh, additional benefits may be considered through program policy factors, which might include drinking water production or use of waste heat for home heating. Next slide, please. Another observation is regarding electric grid connection. Applications for projects requiring electric grid connection or other forms of offtake agreement should demonstrate the process for interconnection, a partnership with the identified utility to achieve the proposal and the metrics that govern any interconnection or offtake agreements. Regulatory processes and requirements required to provide electricity to the grid, um, the, the current state of the project slash process, uh, which might include regulatory approvals or timelines, the commitments from the utility off takers allowing the proposed project, any agreements or contracts such as PPAs, net metering agreements between the project and the electric utility off taker. And one uh, next slide, please. And one, uh, the last observation uh, common issue uh, is regarding community benefits uh, plans. Uh, community benefit plans should identify and outline strategies to mitigate potential negative impacts. Potential negative impacts could include ecological, such as effects on natural resources and on the components, structures, and functioning of affected ecosystems, aesthetic, historic, cultural, economic, social, or health impacts. Applicants are encouraged to consider direct impacts, indirect impacts, and cumulative impacts. Applicants are encouraged to think broadly about the project benefits and describe benefits that go beyond job creation. Benefits may include environmental, economic, health, social, or other benefits, including benefits defined by impacted communities. Applicants are encouraged to describe mechanisms for accountability with impacted communities. Community benefit plans should identify resources required to implement CBP activities, including the person or party responsible for implementation. Now I'll pass it back to Regina to go over the next steps in the application process. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So for next steps, only applicants who have submitted an eligible concept paper are eligible to submit an application or a full application. Applicants that were both encouraged and discouraged may submit a full application. And by discouraging the submission of a full application, DOE intends to convey its lack of programmatic interest in the proposed project. The purpose of the concept paper phase 
is to save applicants the considerable amount of time and expense that we understand are involved in preparing a full application that is unlikely to be selected for award negotiations. Please note that the submission deadline, as was noted earlier, is August 2nd of 2023 at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Next slide. As Jeremy mentioned, we want to tell you also, while we have you here, about another program funding opportunity for clean energy demonstrations. So on May 11th, Department of Energy announced a $50 million funding opportunity for grant funding. And this funding opportunity announcement is designed to support small community-driven clean energy demonstration projects requiring between $500,000 and $5 million federal cost share. This grant-focused funding opportunity announcement utilizes a simplified application process, we hope, and will award fixed amount grants with no cost share requirements. This mechanism, we hope, significantly reduces financial reporting requirements associated with the larger Department of Energy awards. Next slide, please. We also want to tell you about, in addition to the other funding opportunity we have out there, technical assistance resources through the ERI program. So this technical assistance we are offering to communities to build successful teams, to develop necessary technical analysis, trekking metrics, and for sharing experiences toward clean energy demonstrations. First, NREL, or the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and other DOE laboratories in support are providing technical assistance under our program, and that will support applications for the FOAs, the funding opportunities that we've told you about here. This consultation service consists of up to eight hours of telephone conversations with each community interested at no cost to applicants who submitted a FOA concept paper. For those of you that will apply to the grant funding opportunity that I told you about, those applicants that move from pre-application in that grant funding opportunity to application will have access to the eight hours of technical assistance from NREL and other laboratories. Interested applicants can find more information on our website. It's listed here <clears throat> for our program, Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas. Also, as referenced in section 2.4 of the $300 million Cooperative Agreements FOA, that is FOA number 2970, regional technical assistance will be available soon through a partnership with the Environmental Protection Agency's Environmental Justice Thriving Community Technical Assistance Centers. The acronym is EJ Tic Tac. We say Tic Tacs. In cooperation with us, EPA selected 17 of these centers across the country just this spring, and the staff should have curriculum, webinars, and consulting, including technical consulting, available by late June of 2023 to improve accessibility for communities with environmental justice concerns, including clean energy demonstrations. Keep an eye on the Environmental Protection Agency's website for more information, and we list it here. That is the Environmental Justice Thriving Communities Technical Assistance Centers Program through the EPA. One more note here in thinking about additional support for communities for clean energy demonstrations, something to keep in consideration for both of the funding opportunities that we told you about. The United States Department of Agriculture Rural Development Program also has funding programs for electric and energy projects throughout rural communities. Find information about these programs at www.rd.usda.gov. That's www.rd.usda.gov. Next slide, please. 
Finally, I would like to share an important caveat about how Department of Energy personnel can engage with you around this funding opportunity announcement. Department of Energy personnel are prohibited from communicating in writing or otherwise with applicants regarding the FOA, except through the established question and answer process that's described on this slide. And I'll speak to it a little bit. Specifically, questions regarding this funding opportunity announcement must be submitted to our specific email address. It's specific to this funding opportunity announcement, and I'll spell it for you. It's E-R-A-F-O-A-1, the number one, at hq.doe.gov. Questions must be submitted no later than three business day or days prior to the application due date and time. And please note, feedback on individual concepts will not be provided through that question and answer mechanism. All questions and answers related to this funding opportunity announcement will be posted on the OSIT Exchange website. You must first select this specific funding opportunity announcement number, that's 2970, to view questions and answers specific to this funding opportunity announcement. OSID will attempt to respond to a question within three business days, unless a similar question and answer has already been posted to the website, so we encourage you to browse those. Questions related to the registration process and use of OSID Exchange website should be submitted to a separate email address. It's OCED-ExchangeSupport at hq.doe. Gov. Include the FOA name and number in your subject line. Please also refer to the funding opportunity announcement for the definitions of used terms and a lot of additional information related to the requirements of any additional post-application submission information. And with that, I'm going to ask for the next slide and close us out today. I want to thank all of our panelists, the great team behind us that put this together, made this possible, engaged us with all of you. And on behalf of the whole team, we thank all of our attendees for listening to this webinar. And as a reminder, the FOA remains the controlling document. If information was presented differently by any of us during this webinar from the FOA, then consider the FOA the guiding document and you should refer and reference that funding opportunity announcement. The recording of this webinar will be posted to the OSID website within the next couple of weeks. I have one final reminder here. As a final reminder, the submission deadline for applications to the $300 million funding opportunity announcement is August 2nd, 2023. That is extended from the original date that was June 28th. So August 2nd at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We encourage applicants to submit applications well before that Eastern time application deadline. And thank you again, everyone for attending.